Current sponsored by John Hughes in Victoria Park. Choose your station before you choose your program. Absolutely. Welcome to another week of Undercurrent, which this week finds me here right in the heart of Subiaco. Well, as I mentioned last week, in a brand new initiative here on Undercurrent, we are taking Undercurrent out to regional Western Australia. This week, our story is from Port Hedland on a new initiative called Swim for Jobs. My name is Chris Retellick, I'm the YMCA Gratwick Aquatic Centre Manager and I've been uh, working with the YMCA since uh, October 2005. Basically have been involved with the YMCA program uh, from a, a ground level. Pleased to say that uh, we've put through uh, over 60 people through the program since 2008. My name is Brandy Joseph and I'm employed by YMCA as a community worker. Um, I'm a project officer of a program called PACE that basically is a program designed to get people that haven't been work ready or has been unemployed for over 12 months to get them in work related training and get them the small self esteem and self confidence boost that they need to approach those kind of things. My name is Jessie Flintoff McGrath, I'm an apprentice electrician at BHP Billiton for Apprenticeships Australia. I started the Swim for Life program when I was 17 years old. Um, it was a great learning experience. I you know, did my bronze medallion, senior first aid. I went through all these courses and you know, hurdles because it, was, you know, it became an achievement at the end. I found that I've learned a lot from the Swim for Life program just to deal with people, problems, you know, learn how to make friends. You know, it, it, was, it was a great program and it was a great achievement at the end of it. I'm Laura Matthews and I work at the JD Hardy Centre in South Headland. I work with kids, um, just sport and rec, all that kind of stuff. I'm 17 and I'm still in school, um, doing year 12 at Headland Senior High School. I've done my bronze medallion course in December 2011. Um, it has helped me out, it's boosted my confidence a lot. Um, yeah, I recommend anyone. My name is Anne Mitchell, I'm a project officer for the YMCA. Currently under the PACE program, which is Parents and Community Involvement. Uh, just finished my swimming instructors course and just got to complete the rest of my hours and then I'll sort of be on my way to being a qualified instructor. At the moment, um, in my community project officer role, I am currently new to it. So we, we've just established some new programs to engage parents and their children into getting trainings and, and um, work-related education. Going into the workforce as well, having things like your first aid, you know, that, that's just a minimum requirement, you know, like, and that's awesome to have just in case you get put in that, you know, situation or problem, you kind of have like a little bit of an understanding of how to deal with things. Uh, the program uh, has been very successful, it gives people the opportunity yeah. as a first-time job to learn new skills, uh, to continually develop as a person and professionally. Uh, it does also help alleviate some of the lifeguard shortages we've had in the northwest. We've uh, been very happy with Indigenous uh, lifeguards that have come through the program. Some have gone on to, to work uh, um, outside of the YMCA later on, um, getting apprenticeships. Um, some are still working with us, but uh, we're very happy with their work ethic and uh, you know the, the work that they put in. Having fun and working at the same time, and just the crew that we worked with, you know, it was just it was a really good experience, and I'd highly recommend it. I really think Swim for Life was the opportunity I needed to get back into the workforce. After having my baby, I wasn't sure how to go about it and what kind of people I need to see. The whole team really made me feel welcome, and they were all very supportive of what I wanted to do and supportive of my aspirations and they've really got me to where I want to be.
Karen, Janae Tomlinson investigates that some of our free-range chicken might not in fact be quite so free-range. The public is becoming more aware of the cruelty involved in battery cages in the egg industry. Recently, animal rights groups have criticised the free range label and what it means in regards to animal welfare. I'm Katie Batty, I'm the coordinator of Animal Rights Advocates and we're a Perth based animal organisation. We focus on promoting animal advocacy and animal rights. In the uh, chicken industry you have the egg laying hens and then you have the broiler meat chicken hens, they're totally separate. So for battery cage hens they'd be the ones that are producing the eggs and they're kept in the small battery cages. There's no legally enforceable standard of what free range is, so it's completely misleading for the consumer. You have the Free Range Egg and Poultry Association of Australia, you have the RSPCA and then you have organic. Consumers can be totally misled and they can write things on the packet and can totally mislead the consumer about what it actually is. There's no requirement for what free range is, so they can put that on there and they don't have to be certified or anything. And often, even if they are certified and labelled free range, they've come from the battery cages anyway. And the egg industry never talk about the way the male chicks are killed right away and cut up, and they never talk about that the females are going to be killed as soon as they stop producing eggs anyway. Even the Labor Party in WA are claiming the free range label needs regulation. In Western Australia, it really doesn't mean anything because the Barnett government have failed to regulate any definition of free range and producers can effectively sell any eggs and claim the free range label because there's no regulation governing. Well the focus of government uh, should quite rightly be on animal welfare and also on environmental degradation and uh, I guess we believe that we have in place legislative and regulatory uh, strategies to deal with those two issues and believe uh, the level of stocking density for uh, something to be defined as free range should rightly be defined by industry itself. This has resulted in more consumers choosing to buy free range eggs. Do you buy free range eggs? Yes I do. It's just the same, it's egg, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I do actually, yeah. I always get mum to, but they're yeah, too expensive. So. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking at, say, the free range, uh, free part, the free range egg poultry association of Australia, they talk about having a minimum amount of hour, like hours outside, um, except if there's bad weather. And then the RSPCA barn la label, they would have their own standards about, it's more about having access to water and things like that, because they're in a barn, they're not outside and free roaming. So it's really about those particular organisations will have the standards that they set. I think that we should comply with the standards that have been set in Queensland for a long, long time, which is 15, no more than 1,500 hens per hectare if you want to claim the free range label. And in New South Wales, they've begun to legislate that. And in South Australia, the Liberal Party opposition have called for a limit of 1,500 hens per hectare if you want to claim free range status. The Barnett government has failed to regulate. The Barnett government has absolved itself of any responsibility in this regard. They, if you ask the minister, he would say there isn't an issue. It's not our job you know, to regulate things that sit outside of the formal rules around animal welfare and environmental standards. And why do you buy free range? Because of the chickens, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Supposedly, it's supposed yeah. to be yeah. Oh, I don't think about it, but free range sounds better, yeah. Oh, because they, oh, I don't know, they better, I suppose. And what do you imagine when you think of free range? Chicken heaven. Chickens that have been well looked after. Free range run around in the, in the fields. Free range chickens run around in a chook pen. They will move to free range if they can make a profit out of it because people start to buy more of it. You see that happening now Harvey Fresh is advertising free range milk, you know they can make money out of it. So really the industry is only going to change where it's going to be in their financial interest to do so. They're not going to be concerned about animal welfare unless it's going to align with their financial interests. It seems that despite good intentions from consumers like myself, buying free range eggs might not be all that different from buying caged eggs. Hopefully tougher regulations are put in place so the free range label is only ever used appropriately. I'm Janae Tomlinson for Undercurrent. Well, next up in our ever topical Vox Pop segment, Janae Tomlinson talked to the streets of Perth to find out if you think juvenile offenders should be handed out harsher punishments. Take a look. Commissioner Carlo Callahan has publicly stated that repeat juvenile offenders should be locked up sooner in hopes that home invasion numbers in Perth will decrease. We hit the streets to see if you agree and if you think rehabilitation on repeat offenders will be more likely if tougher penalties are put in place. 
juvenile offenders. Do you think that the law is too soft on them? Definitely, definitely. I think the police do a great job, but the courts let them down, the judges let them down. I think, um, I think we should have more love and less law, because the more laws we make, the more criminals we have. Uh, well, it depends what they do, I guess. I mean, if they kill someone, fair enough, but if they just drop litter, then no. So you can't have a blanket rule. The police commissioner is actually suggesting that we lock up juveniles sooner. Would you agree with this? Um, I know that uh, statistically speaking, um, they, they, sending them to jail earlier doesn't do much in terms of their progress. So, um, but I think I think the police commission has a point. I think that they need to look at why these people are committing the crimes and then do something um, to prevent that. So more. Um, to help them instead of just punish them because then they go they get put in jail and then they're with all the criminals they're going to come back out an even worse criminal than they went in yeah, yeah. This, it's going to be worse if they look they are i mean imagine when they're 14 then they're going to be out by 20th something yeah so they're going to be worse they need some sort of punishment up until the time they're 18. Otherwise, they just think, well, we can do it again. Do you think they should focus on rehabilitation? Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah, that's the, the rehabilitation. That's the way they're going in a lot of countries in Europe and people, places like that. We haven't got there yet. Yeah. I would make it so that um, the crime is never committed in the first place. I wouldn't give them a chance. How would you do that? Um, I would give everybody what they need to survive. Um, if, uh, if the crime was to do with drugs, then uh, I would legalise all the drugs so that people wouldn't be committing crimes, stealing to, to, to fund their drug habit. Why do you think there are so many juvenile offenders? Well, I don't believe there's that many more. I think it's because the media is, reports more on things that are unusual than what we used to, say, 20 years ago, and it, it looks like a lot more. I think probably because of the drug problem, I think that's at the bottom of it all, you know, then breaking into places to look for money to buy their drugs, it's the addiction. I'm guessing, I'm not, well, I'm not going to blame the parents, but like it might be that because it could be something that's going on like in their family and like could maybe cause them to act out. It's a social trend, they've, uh, they've mapped and graphed it and that the more, um, unequal uh, a country is, uh, the more crime and the more social problems they have, the more anxiety, depression, uh, the more uh, teen pregnancies, the more suicide, every single social problem seems to be linked to inequality, so I would tackle that. It seems most people agree, it all depends on the crime, and maybe rehabilitation will be more effective on juveniles than simply locking them up. I'm Janae Tomlinson, reporting for Undercurrent. Now, one of the best things about us here at WTV is that we really are the voice of Western Australia, and that is summed up every week truly in our Vox Pop segment. So if you would like to have your say, make sure you join us in the middle of Perth around about lunchtime every Tuesday. I'm Christy Mollica, more Undercurrent after the break. Undercurrent sponsored by John Hughes in Victoria Park. Choose your station before you choose your program, absolutely.